today's question is, what weighs 250 pounds, is gray all over, speaks English and German, and is allergic to water? What would that be? Well, I'm going to show you. Let's go take a look at Das Boat Anchor. All right, here's Das Boat Anchor here. Um, so, 250 pounds, 100 and, what is that, 114 uh, kilograms. And uh, even in the manual it says, uh, insert lifting bars uh, and use two people <laughs> to put it on the machine. So, it's gray all over. Um, it uh, speaks two languages, German and English. And uh, there we have it. So what this is, is a um, master optical dividing head. And what that means is, it's a dividing head um, that has uh, optical or glass scales in it, so that we view through these, uh, these eyepieces here. Uh, so it's kind of an interesting piece, made by uh, Ernst Leitz Company. Uh, of uh, Leica fame, uh, their camera division, and uh, some of you guys will be familiar with that. It's just beautiful, okay? I have to say that it's like, this is high-end stuff, okay? This is pure white cocaine uh, machinery here, so uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, um, now, unfortunately, it's sick, and uh, which leads us to what we're going to do in this video, which is take it apart. Um, now, if we're lucky, we can fix it. Uh, if we're not so lucky, then uh, uh, you know we'll just see what see what happens. Okay. Um, I managed to let me let me just show you some of the uh, salient features first, and then uh, and then we'll talk a little bit more before we uh, jump into it. So this wonderful piece of history comes to us from um, a Southern California guy uh, Tracy Talbot, um, who. Uh, uh, you know what? It's not clear where he got it from, but uh, he gave it to uh, an acquaintance that uh, that came to the Bar Z Summer Bash, and um, we uh, shuffled this over from uh, his truck to my truck, and uh, now here it is. Um, so let's just talk about it here for a second here. So this thing, um, let's see, make sure I get the frame here. So it has an axis here, all right. And uh, when we rotate this handle, what's supposed to happen is this axis is supposed to turn. Uh, and there's a precision scale that we can view in, in, internally here. And unfortunately, it's occluded right now because of uh, some, some of its problems. Um, but, and then there's a fine adjust here, which is a little worm wheel here. And uh, we can engage that and, uh, and turn that. Now, it's got some really kind of boss features uh, um, that we'll talk about in a second. And as soon as I saw it in the back of the truck, this knob popped out at me here, and uh, it's just a gorgeous, it's a gorgeous knob. Um, you see a scale here too. It also has a rotational axis at 90 degrees, and that one I, I freed up, and, and we can rotate that. And that one also has a glass scale that we can uh, that we can look at, and it's graduated in. Um, um, 20 minute increments, I believe is what it is. So uh, I did get a manual for this. Um, guy in South Africa had them online and I bought it for five bucks. And it's actually um, was useful because it, it, it describes the, uh, a very unique uh, bearing arrangement that's inside this thing that we'll see in a little while here. So, uh, so here's our, uh, our really sweet knob here. Now what this, this particular knob is a, um, is a brake on the uh, the axis in this direction here, and and this just shows you kind of the the level of thought and engineering and expense that uh, that uh, Leitz went to 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 build this thing. Now, so this is we're putting the brake on in this rotation, but you'll notice here that it's got a it's got a locking detent right that this drops into, so that's kind of a midway brake. And then if we want full full hot whammy brake and that's pretty snug there and you see here it's got an over travel pin it's got a detent that automatically just kind of controls you so that you don't have to you know if you got somebody that's a monkey or a gorilla that uh, over tightens things they, they kind of can't okay and this brake is really cool in that it grabs the brake discs 
uh, the brake disc uh, from two sides so it's symmetric. And uh, so the force is symmetric so that there's no uh, deflections that push the, uh, uh, the spindle or the, uh, uh, out, of, uh, out of alignment or whatever. And then clearly to release, we release the little thumb lever and then we can back off. And then it's got to stop in the other direction too, right? And this knob, it's, you know, it's satin chrome plated there. It's just, it's got that real satisfying uh, clicky, uh, you know, super nice uh, instrument feel to it. Okay, and then let's, uh, let's move down here. We have uh, uh, the uh, worm gear, the main worm gear that's supposed to turn the spindle, which it doesn't right now because there's some, something going on inside. Every once in a while I can get it to turn. And there it goes right there, you can see it. But if I go the other direction, it the screw disengages for some reason. So there's some alignment problem or not sure what's going on there. But this, this crazy thing is, once again, the spring-loaded detent here. And we can, and then a lever, and you see what's happening here? This hand wheel is tilting. And what it's doing is it's tilting the and disengaging the the screw from the worm, right? So that this can freewheel. But the the lockout mechanisms here, see, look at that. It's got a, a lock for full open and a lock for full closed. It's just it's just fantastic, man. Who does that, right? You know, most designers nowadays. Uh, you know, they'd put a set screw there with a knob, right? And that would be your, your brake or your lock. So this, this, is, this is superior uh, foolproof engineering here, right? So uh, that the thing will last, you know, 100 years or however old this thing is. Actually, I don't think this is 100 years old. Uh, judging from the electrics and the, um, uh, and the styling, I'm going to say uh, 50s or 60s, something like that. So. And then this is a fine adjust here. If we engage that... Now we can do a, a fine adjust. This particular axis um, you can subdivide to one arc second. So this is the spindle main axis here, which is kind of oddball, uh, I have to admit. Um, it's got a Morse taper in it, and I don't know, what is that? A, a four, that's bigger than a four. It's a five or a six, something like that. And it has a little draw bar from the other side, so you can something with a Morse taper, you can suck it in there and then uh, tighten it up and, and retain it with the draw bar. Um, and all this mass here, and we got this spindly little attachment here, so uh, uh, it seems a little bit odd to me, but uh, um, this was made to, as an inspection tool to inspect gears, and uh, let's take this off so you guys can see underneath there. I mean, look at this hand wheel, or this knob here. Beautiful neural scale okay now here you can start to see some of the problems that this thing's had is it took a bath somewhere it got wet got rained on or submerged or something and that's part of the part of the problem with the uh the guts in there is uh is it's sick inside so all right well let's just leave that off because we're going to be taking that off and then this uh uh these Retaining rings here give us access to the the large bearing uh, that's on this end here. So this is the uh, um, distal end of the uh, of the unit here, and this is the little draw bar uh, that retains the the Morse taper thing of a bob that you put in there. And um, this particular unit, uh, the handbook that I have shows a hand wheel on this, but they also offered a motor drive version. And what this is is a is a uh, it's a flexible coupling here and if we turn this it turns a, um, a screw that actuates it against this uh, worm gear and I mean look at this this is embedded this is embedded in the um, uh, into the body of this so that the pitch line is right on the surface of, of the of the rotation okay which is so that doesn't introduce any uh, any uh, twi uh, offsetting uh, moments. I think is probably the intent there. You know, much it'd be much easier to just mount this on the surface, right? Instead of digging a trench for it and sticking it in there. But then there would be some offset between the line of force and and um, the journal. So uh, that's my theory anyway. There. So uh, um, 
and you know, made in West Germany, uh, New York 13. So that's when they did the old area code. So I don't know when that went out of fashion. Uh, one of you internet uh, sleuths can probably put that in the comments somewhere uh, when they kind of ended that. So it predates zip codes. And then, um, let's see, what else? Uh, let me just uh, flip this around here, save some time. And there's an access cover here, and it's marked Ernst Lietz. Uh, Wetzler, West, uh, it just says Germany, it doesn't say West Germany. It said West Germany over there. So, I don't know. Let's, uh, I think that's, uh, and there's a little bit more on this mechanism here, which is really sweet. I don't know, what do you say? Let's take this damn thing apart. I'm itching. All right, so before we dive into the guts of this thing, I wanted to show you the kind of the lay of the land here. So this is a, a cross section um, looking down at the top of this thing. And you can see this very unique bearing that they have here. It's spherical with balls that project through a, a, a shell. And I'm assuming that this is a retainer. Um, if it's not and those balls uh, are just, it's just a separator and not a retainer, then uh, we're in for some, uh, some uh, surprise action there when this thing spills its guts uh, when I take those, uh, those retaining rings off. And then it has a similar one back here that I assume is accessed through the uh, retaining rings that we saw in the back there. And then there's the Morse taper, there's our little drawbar, and then this is a, a diagram of the brake mechanism um, that clamps, here you can see it here, so here's the brake disc, and this is the clamp, and this is the clamp. So it clamps on both sides of the disc to prevent any, you know, offset forces. And then there's how it's linked from one side to the other. So here's our knob that cranks in there, pushes on that, and so we 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 grab on both sides of the uh, the brake disc. Pretty cool, okay. And then here's a this is a optical diagram here, okay. Um, that shows the scale that we're looking at and the way the optics work on this is that it looks at both sides of the scale at the same time, right? And there's a split in the optical system so that you basically align the two halves together. And this increases uh, your, um, um, increases accuracy. Uh, and it also eliminates any, if there's any eccentricities in the, uh, in the optical scale, it, or it, it cancels those out because you're looking at both sides of the uh, of the thing. Now there's some problems in this area too. Um, when you look through this, when I get the light on here, right, uh, and when I look through that, and I can't get any good video through the eyepiece, sorry guys. Um, when you look through that, I can see the coarse scale, but I can't see the fine scale that divides it in seconds. Um, it's got some crud on it, mud or rust or corrosion or something is on the uh, uh, some parts of the optical system, so we'll get up in there and uh, um, see if we can do anything with that and, uh, and take a look at that. So, there it is. We're going to start up here on the top. Uh, this is where the optical system drops in, and uh, this was my first. So, the light works. Um, I did fry the bulb with my power supply initially, but I got a new, bu new bulb. Um, and there's the, the bulb that illuminates the optics. and, and this is made out of brass, it's got phenolic on it, very fine threads, nice knurling, it's just, it's just gorgeous. Um, now, you can also see here, uh, this thing took a bath once again, right? Now, I'll warn you guys, I'm probably going to wreck some things taking this apart, just to be honest. Uh, here's a good example, right? Uh, there's screws under these little caps here, and you can see this one here. But they're just very, very thin little brass caps, right? And um, you know, and I suspected that's what that was, what was going on there. But to get that off, I, I literally I, I punched a little hole in it and then popped it out. I mean, it slides out fairly easily once you have something, some purchase. The only way I can think about getting those out of there is maybe gluing something on and then trying to wiggle that out. But um, um, this isn't that kind of video, unfortunately. Okay, so. Uh, um, you know, avert your eyes when uh, when I'm about to do some uh, bosonic uh, <laughs> uh, bosonic activities, right? And then it's got a nice slotted screw underneath it, right? And I, oh, that's tighter than the monkey's uncle, so I probably have to get a um, 
a bigger screwdriver and then use some uh, use some leverage on that so let me uh, you know what I'm just gonna do that off camera <laughs> so uh, it's not to upset you guys <laughs> I'll get those little caps out of there and then we'll uh, we'll remove we'll remove the top of this together in a nice way that one wasn't too bad these are nice uh, phil uh, philister head screws look at that You know, one of the things that doesn't come across in the video is uh, this thing actually has some um, some smells associated with it. Uh, as I as I crack, as I open this up, um, there's you know smells of oil and uh, and kind of machinery smells, I guess I would call it, so that are mildly interesting. Yeah, this screw's got some. We got a couple, a couple of, uh, a couple of dowel pins right there that are probably holding this thing up. Let's see here. Oh, it's coming up. Where's my, uh, my thing here? Oop. Okay. That wasn't too bad. Right, let's see what happens here. Ooh. Oh yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> so, wish we had smell o vision. The smell that's coming out of here is pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's that's got some problems there. It's got this really kind of cool focusing mechanism here. That still works. All right, let's set this aside. So there's part of our problem there. You can see that there's some um, some schmutz in there or whatever. I don't know what it is. And um, um, and there's you know corrosion icicles here. Okay, let's set this aside here. I don't think we need to go any farther with that particular piece here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a shot down the uh, down the periscope here and you can uh, get a look at the uh, the inside before we go uh, getting into that all right so you can see you know there's some pretty good corrosion on this thing okay so let's let's try this uh well it doesn't even not very exciting this uh, mechanism the, the locking mechanism it barely moves at all but uh let's see can you see on that Cameras in my way there. So this is the uh, this is the the brake rotor here, and then if you look way down in there, that's one of the little brake pads down there, and that's that linkage I described earlier uh, that that goes across. Yeah, and this is the linkage rod here. All right, well, let's keep going here. This is uh, this is pretty cool. So I think I'm going to open the access cover and let some light in here from the uh, the opposite side. I'm using my these are gunsmith screwdrivers made by uh, um, Forster Products. Forster, yeah. Let's say I, was, I thought it said Forester, but there's no e there. Um, and these are unique because they're the the blade is parallel. It's not tapered like a normal screwdriver. So. A normal screwdriver the blade is tapered so these are parallel so when you don't want to booger screws which is what I'm trying to do here if I don't have to um, um, you use these parallel jobs here and because um, the sides of this the sides of the slot are parallel so it makes sense that uh, that uh, that you'd want parallel thing um, a blade Okay, and there's some of that shop DNA in the slot there. <laughs> I think I already did that one. Yeah. Okay. So now we can we can go ballistic here. It's one thing I don't like about slotted is you get it everything. You have to align. You don't have to just go 90 degrees, right? You gotta orient.
Okay, so it sounds like it's loose. Thinner than I thought. Oh, look at the uh, look at corrosion here. That's a kind of thin ring there. Okay, so 049. So I don't know if that's a manufacturer date, 51, which I could believe actually. Um, There's nothing. There's nothing there that uh, that leads me. Uh... So now the question is. So I think I'm just going to leave that off for now, and uh, till I get a little further along here and see what's going on. So I found one of the uh, one of the problems here. So it has this uh, eccentric uh, focusing ring that um, you actuate from the top. But what's supposed to happen is this arm here is supposed to track along that, um, along the eccentric there like that. But what's happened is, and it's spring loaded to return, but it's kind of old and full of uh, dried grease and stuff. So it doesn't want to, it doesn't want to return. So my, mission here is to get a introduce a little bit of lubricant into the pivot point there that seems to be stuck which is right here and over here uh, and but I don't want to just spray it down so I use these uh, these little eyedroppers that have a whip tip on them here and I get these from uh, Stuart McDonald uh, Stumac uh, and, you know they're disposable so you can suck up a little uh, a little liquid love there like so okay get a little in the bulb but what you can do is uh, basically dispense a, a drop very yeah right very precisely drip um, right where you want it uh, which is kind of what I want to do right there right there and right there let's do that on this side too There and right there. Okay, and then uh, let me uh, exercise that a little bit. All right, so it's probably more than that. It's probably preloaded pretty good, but uh, and then so those are. Um, they look like mirrors or lenses of some sort here. Can I see from the... Uh, uh, yeah, there's some kind of lenses. Um, looking at the diagram here, hard to say. All right, let me fiddle around with that. Uh, I'm not going to take this apart. I'm going to try to get it freed up because maybe we can stick it back in and, um, and get, it a, get a better look at the fine division scale. Well, I found the bit that was jammed. So... You can see now how it's kind of supposed to operate here, uh, these pivot. Now, whatever alignment was between this optical element and this is, has been lost now because it, it, uh, the actuation arm swiveled on this, on this shaft here, so the relation is gone. I'm just going to put it back together and then maybe uh, uh, tune, um, tune it. Look at these beautiful little screws that they had, little filister head. Okay, oops. Uh -oh, something. Right, let me, uh... So these are little bearing caps on that uh, 
big old hands probably in the way. Alright, so I'm going to run down until this touches. This touches, back off, back off. And then we'll just kind of ease it down at this point. And then see if we. And that's an oil hole, actually. Okay, so that seems to be. Seems to be better. So let's put the spring back on and see if we have. Uh, Yep, so now that's tracking on there. So I can I can fiddle with the alignment uh, once we get, uh, yeah, okay, that's better. So I think I'm gonna take this cover off now. Um, there's too much light here. I'm gonna take this cover off here because you can see that that's got some icky stuff on the inside that I'll try to clean off. thing got thoroughly soaked at some point. Pretty much beyond uh, okay. That doesn't seem too scary. Um, what it looks like to me, there's there may be only be one thing attached to this the inside of this plate. Um, so this might looks appears to be a really good piece to pull off here, so that we can see the uh, we can see the guts of this. Actually, let me uh, pull this up to the edge here. Oh, you know what? No, don't do that. Don't do that. Let's see. I don't want to drop the thing. persuasion here so that might be just everything kind of assembled in from one side this one dowel pin here is giving me a little bit of a little bit of trouble here all right I am gonna pull it off try to hold on to it here point where 10,000 ball bearings go flying here. <clears throat> come on. I mean, come on. It can only be in these two spots here. Okay. I'm just, I'm just being too, too, uh, too much of a ninny here, I think. Climatic, huh? Ooh, look at that. So there's a a reflector of some sort there. Huh, interesting. Okay. Set, set that aside carefully. Let's take a look at what we got here. Alright. That's sheet metal. That's pinned in, that's precision. 
Okay, I think this ring's coming out next here. I'll tell you, these, uh, these particular screws are, uh, now I already did these two here, but uh, there's corrosion right at each screw here. Um, and these are tighter than a monkey's uncle. I ended up, so I don't know if I've showed these before, but uh, these are, you know, vice grips that I brazed um, copper to. And you can see that it's actually imprinted the, uh, the screw head in there. And so it gives me a, a non-marring, uh, you know, better purchase on that. This skinny little thin driver is just not enough. I already snapped off a, uh, a one uh, one uh, screwdriver already uh, doing that. So now we got it. So let's pop those out. And the other thing is on this kind of stuff. God, look how long. Why would you? Why would you put a screw that long in there? So uh, because we are leets. That's why. Um, probably because that's the uh, only, what is it, three millimeter screw that, uh, that they have in stock. I don't know. I uh, forgot what I was saying there. Um, that I remember now. So. Oh, uh, yeah, now I, <laughs> now I remember. So, if you, you know, patience is important here. So what I did also is I dribbled a little bit of, uh, of uh, here we go. Oh, yeah. You, that's a nice part. It's spun. It's really thin, actually. So, okay. Well, there's the depths of destruction there, and I was right that uh, that cover wasn't holding uh, any any pivots or anything like that. All right. There's one end of the optical system there. This is some kind of fine adjust here to, to for aligning. Uh, once it's assembled is my guess and then you lock it down uh, here's our brake mechanism and there's a bucket of rust and this guy right here that I'm pointing at that is the uh, the screw that runs against the worm and this is actually one of the things that has a problem right now because it's not fully engaging and I'm not sure why um, either there's dried grease there's dried grease in the worm and it can't fully engage uh, or something, but we'll figure it out once uh, once we get down in there. So, okay. This has multiple dowel pins in it. Oh wow, that's interesting. Huh. Yeah. So this is split. So I suspect that this is actually a bearing now. Um, see, it's split like that, like a tolerance ring, so that they can kind of have it preloaded so it has fingers. Uh, I wonder. So I'm kind of curious how they how they got this thing together actually because it's got this bulbous casting thing on the top here and you can see the diameter that it rotates at is either right here or slightly larger um, and so how did they put this together and uh, it's kind of a it's kind of a, a mystery right now I'm sure it'll be a, well let's pull this out see what we get here. I mean, uh, if you don't know, find out, right? Oh, I think I got a, I think I got a, so those are the things that are holding it right there, those two spots. Look at that piece. That's steel. Kind of a pain in the neck piece to make. Thin wall like that, and uh, you know, knowing these guys, the precision diameter. Now you can see the wear pattern on here too. So 
um, it was only touching in a few places here. Huh, interesting. Okay, well, one more piece out. And yeah, what the heck did that do? Nothing. <laughs> yeah, I had to chip away all the rust on the inside and vacuum it out of there. It's, it's loaded on the inside, so. Unfortunately, this thing's too far gone for, uh, uh, for a restoration, but we'll learn something by disassembling it and studying the mechanisms that, uh, that we find.